vascular malformations. So I will be concentrating basically on the different categories of uh, vascular malformations and uh, we'll be stressing on their imaging appearance and the uh, associated complications. Um, coming to the classification, different um, books and different articles are giving different forms of uh, classifications. Um, uh, the one uh, most common uh, 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 that we uh, see is basically they are divided into four categories. So uh, the first one is the arteriovenous malformations, which include uh, the parenchymal um, or the pile malformations, which is known as the uh, classic uh, AVM. Uh, then we have the dural AVMs and fistula and then a mixed pile and dural AVMs. The other thing is the uh, capillary uh, telangiectasia, then the cavernous angiomas, and the venous malformations, which include uh, the venous angiomas, which are the uh, developmental venous anomalies, then the vein of uh, gallon malformations, and the venous varices. Um, some people like to classify it in a different way, wherein they would uh, want to know which are the shunt uh, forming uh, malformations and which uh, malformations do not have any shunts. And uh, these are important from the uh, treatment point of view. So uh, the uh, um, arteriovenous malformations, the dural uh, arteriovenous fistula, and the vein of gallon malformations, um, these are the shunt forming malformations and the no shunt malformations are the DVAs, the uh, cavernous malformations and the um, capillary uh, telangiectasias which do not require much treatment. Then coming to the uh, um, um, classic AVM, so basically this is a complex network of abnormal vascular channels um, which consists of arterial feeders and then uh, some arterial collaterals, the uh, nidus, and the enlarged venous outflows. The nidus is basically an abnormal dysplastic intervening uh, capillary bed of numerous small AV shunts. So these classic AVMs or the parenchymal AVMs are also known as the pile AVMs. These are generally congenital and the uh, peak age of presentation is about 20 to 40 years, but uh, about 25% of these are seen in childhood and adolescence. Um, they can occur anywhere in the brain or spinal cord and about 85% are uh, supratentorial and 98% uh, of these uh, lesions are generally solitary and if you see multiple AVMs then they are generally associated with some syndromes. So these are the syndromes um, generally seen with the AVMs. Uh, Sturge Weber as we all know is uh, facial angiomas with AVM. There is this Rendu Osler Weber syndrome, which has multiple visceral, mucosal, and cerebral avians. And another Wyburn Mason syndrome, which is um, retinal angiomatosis with cutaneous angiomas and midbrain avians. Now, the clinical presentation of these avians, um, about 50% of these cases actually present with hemorrhage. And the risk of hemorrhage um, in these is about 2 to 4% per year. This means that if there are 100 people with um, an AVM, about two to four of those people would have hemorrhage in one year. So the individual person's risk over the lifetime increases with the uh, presentation. If a person presents early in age, say at about 20, then the overall risk will be much more compared to a person who pre presents at 40 or 50 because the risk is calculated by the uh, percentage per year. Then the other form of presentation is like uh, seizures in about 25%, neurologic deficits in 20 to 25%. Some people have chronic headache. A lot of uh, AVMs also are asymptomatic. And sometimes with hydrocephalus and heart failure, particularly with the VOG, vein of gallon malformations. Now the um, CT findings in uh, arteriovenous malformations um, are pretty variable. Um, as I said, um, uh, we see hemorrhage in about 50% cases. The um, uh, findings are pretty subtle on non-contrast CT, wherein you just see slight hyperdensity and some calcification or mostly negative. And they may enhance slightly on post-contrast CT if it